Hello and welcome to another Creative Cow Shed. And this week we have got a guest. We do like it when we have a guest. Uh, this week we've got Christine from Macquarie Consulting. Um, some of you may already know, um, but do you want to do a quick intro? Yes. Uh, so I'm Christine. I'm the founder and MD of Macquarie Consulting. We are a specialist equestrian marketing and web design agency. So we're based in the UK. I'm originally from Norway. Uh, we've been operating now for about three and a half years, and we serve clients throughout Europe, Scandinavia, US, Canada, and the Middle East. So we've grown proportionally, really, over the last, well, I would say, COVID, actually. <laughs> that's that's what we do. Fabulous. And obviously, we are here today to talk about Squarespace, which is something that we chatted with you about before, behind closed doors. And um, some people will know that we actually made the move to Squarespace from our website point of view. Uh, was it a couple of months ago now, Charlotte? Yeah, I want to say about two months-ish. Yeah. Might be longer. It was all a blur. Um, <laughs> and um, Christine was one of the first people that messaged us going, you've moved your website to Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> And be we, busted. <laughs> yeah, and we have been quite pro WordPress for a long time, but um, following on from a move that I did with another website from WordPress to Squarespace last summer, um, we took the decision to move our site across as well. And it is something we're certainly not regretting. And uh, following on from writing a blog for the Aquary website, we thought it would be good to get you on to talk about the pros, but also potentially some of the, like not cons, but some of the challenges presented by things like Squarespace um, and a little bit about your experience. So how did you come to be working with Squarespace websites? Well, I was actually working for a marketing agency, mainstream marketing, so not horse related at all, uh, to gain some further experience, sort of big agency experience. And they, at the time I was signing on WordPress on a freelance basis, and they were using Squarespace. And I remember coming in thinking, I poo pooed it. I was like, why on earth? You know, someone of your size and magnitude designing websites for brands across the globe. Um, use something as like DIY as Squarespace. Why would you do that? That's ridiculous. And after sort of four hours of meetings where they would strategically plan out a whole website build and have it finalized five days later, I thought it makes perfect business sense. And what for me was extraordinary was not just the sort of the content management side of it, which is so easy, but it's easy for the client to pick up and manage themselves afterwards. So that was sort of the aha kind of experience that pushed me into, into Squarespace, which meant I ended up moving every single of my clients off WordPress onto Squarespace. <laughs> no small job. <laughs> Just because I thought, you know, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna make the move, I don't want to be maintaining sites on one platform whilst building on another. From a business perspective, that is, you know, difficult. So I said to them, if you want me to continue man managing your site, please come with me and I'll rebuild your site free of charge, which I do think is quite a generous thing to do. No way. <laughs> they were really happy with it. And everyone who's, you know, we made the move for, uh, whether we manage their sites now or not, are delighted that we did because it just makes their job updating content, whether it's products, whether it's something as simple as blogging or a news page, they can do it without asking questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, for those that might not know or understand the magnitude of it, when you say you're moving a site from WordPress, WordPress to Squarespace, what does that actually involve? <sighs> yeah, it's it's a it's a whole process really. So in short, you have to make sure that every single URL that was already set up for your site, uh, you know, you've got you've got that mapped out because. For instance, a blog on Squarespace, you will have your domains. Let's say, for instance, aquaryco.com forward slash blog forward slash the name of the blog, because you don't have that on a WordPress page. So you have to make sure you map your URLs out, which, depending on how big the site is, this can be a lot of work. Um, and then trying to 
keep the existing brand on a platform that ultimately have a totally different, you know, foundation to build a site on. There are certain restrictions and there are certain flexibilities that they wouldn't have had with their previous sites that we've had to take into account to, you know, keep that brand aligned with their existing brand. So, yeah, a lot of moving things around, requesting, can I please have your images again? <laughs> and all of that. But, yeah, it's... Um, I think ultimately what you want to highlight is the importance of keeping, you know, URLs, you know, aligned. So there's no redirecting traffic to a faulty page. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. One of the big things that appealed to me initially when I was considering what, where to move my e-commerce site was how easy it was to manage product on Squarespace and I think that's and, and something that we talk about a lot is choose platforms whether it's scheduling tools websites social media sites etc choose the ones that you actually feel like you can work with and that was a big thing for me was something that was intuitive in its management mm. and I think even I mean that the Squarespace help is fantastic but I set up a uh, my full product um library uh, within i had that site built in a day didn't i charlotte pretty much yeah and you you're so for those that don't know alice sells business lead with life which sells lots of belts dog collars and brow bands all different sizes and colorways mm. so it's quite a complicated product matrix it wasn't just a case of oh i've got 10 products that haven't got sizes so there's a lot of different colours, size and things involved in that. So I was amazed. And you said, yeah, I've just, I've done it. I've whacked them all off. <laughs> and yeah, that was one of my big challenges with WordPress. I inherited a WordPress from, site from somebody else. But the the way that WooCommerce was organised just didn't make, I couldn't make head nor tail of it. Whereas it seemed quite intuitive. And, and it, is that... Is that, would you describe Squarespace as that as a whole in terms of everything? A hundred percent, yes. And I think the fact that you've moved your, you know, how to hear <laughs> website onto Squarespace, I think even Charlotte might agree to say it. <laughs> yeah, I think the the fact that, so, you know, yes, it's labeled as a DIY as website, that doesn't mean that there's design restrictions because you can still go in and tweak it with, you know, CSS and HTML and things like that. Um, but it allows you to go in and operate within a framework that essentially guarantees a good outcome wherever you do. You don't need any design experience. You don't need any, you know, web developer's experience. You can go on and set up your site or even manage your site without any of that knowledge. And I think that's important, especially when you work with small businesses. You know, I design websites and I don't ever claim to be a web developer. For me, it's more about design and you know the aesthetics of it but it's highly important for me to be able to hand over a site that I know people can comfortably manage themselves because ultimately time is money if they want to if they want to you know outsource that that's fine but if they have the time to manage that themselves and tweak things and update things it would take them less no time at all doing that on something like first place as opposed to WordPress where yeah, also risking a pie. <laughs> <laughs> you might accidentally delete something because you don't know what you picked. Or, you know, I think to me, I often say to people who don't understand sort of the different platforms, they just know that the WordPress is the best and the most popular. I explain this be like if you used to use an iPhone and someone give you an Android, you have no idea what you're doing. You don't know what if you click the button, you have five options as opposed to just one. And that's a little bit the same with Squarespace, where you click something and you know what's going to happen, as opposed mm -hmm. to you click something and suddenly there's 15 different options, which one should you take? <laughs> I think, yeah, that for me is the best, the best bit about it from, you know, the customer's point of view, the fact that they can manage it themselves, because it does what it says in the tin. Yeah. And what we really love is the mobile apps as well, and being able to really quickly log in and change things on our phones mm. update links whatever it might be being able to see the analytics the e-commerce all on the app so you're not having to check into a computer and i know 
you can try and do that with WordPress on a phone or tablet, but it's not easy. No. <laughs> Nothing like as easy. So that that was a really good feature, I thought. I think, like you say, for usability, for most people now who are using mobile devices to pretty much run their lives from, it's a really great feature. Yeah. I think also it's, I mean, it used to be that if something wasn't quite right on our website, like we were saying, you know, sometimes our um our fonts would disappear and things like that and that would automatically be me going charlotte help because charlotte is a lot more versed in wordpress websites than i am you know i can do the basics but by no means do i enjoy it and i don't understand things like panel and all that kind of stuff and and i don't want to like i have no interest in that so i'm sort of i would say i'm like the target audience for things like Squarespace because I'm a control freak so I want to be able to do it but equally I don't want to spend hours learning really complicated stuff and also I think one word of warning with WordPress is all these plugins built by all these different people not only is it a you know you don't necessarily know that they work a lot of them do you know it's unusual that they don't work but sometimes they're a bit quirky but also from a security perspective how secure is WordPress? and also is that person going to suddenly go i'm not supporting this plugin anymore i've moved on and they stop updates and they stop support and it has happened it happened with a photography plugin that i was looking into a few years ago and it was a one-man band i didn't go with it in the end for that exact reason yeah. Because the thing what happened, he broke up with his wife and, they, and then it all, all the support stopped for like a year. But th that happens. Yeah. You know, these are just people and there's some amazing, amazing plugins out there, don't get me wrong, but you've got to factor that in. And also a lot of the really good plugins that come with 24-7 support usually come at a cost. Yeah. So you go, oh, hosting for a WordPress site is usually cheaper than a Squarespace site. But what you're not getting is the support the builder because yeah. wordpress page builders usually come at a cost yeah um a lot of the what would be plugins in wordpress that you can do automatically in squarespace again may come at a cost so it's weighing it up there's different different things you can do and there's pros and cons and it'll always cost you time or money yeah. at the end of the day yeah exactly i think you know back to what you were saying about the sponsor and everything in Squarespace, you go over a thousand Adobe fonts, you go over six hundred Google fonts, and instantly there, there is nearly bound to be something there that is the same as you would have on your offline marketing. Mm -hmm. Ideal, especially for small businesses or even big businesses. There's no requirement to buy that font; so you, it's there, it's there for you to use. If you've already got Adobe, then it's sorted. And um, you know they've got only one hundred and twenty-five or so mm -hmm. templates. Now, the interesting thing is that all of their templates are built on the same foundation. So when people go, well, you know, there's only so many templates and they, they all look the same. Well, actually, no, go scrolling through their library and not a single one of them looks the same, despite being built on the same basic structure. And that gives some idea of what you can do even without any element of coding. And I think that's where where you have something like even Shopify, but let's keep it in place for this, for this talk. Um, if you overload your site with custom code and your, you know, the template or your theme is updated, there will be glitches there because your theme is also overridden by this code that suddenly might not fit the mm. updates that you've got, and then suddenly it's not performing like you wanted it to. That's why you have to pay a website developer to fix it for you, additional costs. Whilst if you don't overload any sort of coding or CSS or anything like that onto your Squarespace site, you just updates itself there's no theme updates required there's no plugins required or plugin updates and i think the plugins people will talk about like squarespace plugins they're actually just code snippets that mm -hmm. allow you to tweak whether it's a text or the color of your buttons and things like that more so than the template allows you to do um which yes squarespace if you do that might turn around and go sorry we can't actually support you you might have to pay someone to help you with this but updates won't really affect the use of these code methods at all, you yeah. know, to the level that people generally would use them. Um, so in comparison, we can use the iPhone versus Android again. You know, iPhone, 
it's a closed system. Everything happens on an iPhone or on Apple is built essentially by Apple, whilst on Android you've got all these little uh, open source systems. So you've got loopholes for security, which is the same with the plugins. You know, like you said, Bob, your neighbor might have built it. He might not know much about, <laughs> about building any kind of applications for website purposes and whether he, you know, lets you down because he stops supporting it or he's left a massive gaping hole um, for hackers or anything like that to get through because he doesn't know enough about web security, that's something you're putting onto your website for anyone, you know, come in and take over. And that's the worry. So, yeah, on the security point of view, you definitely think Squarespace, especially when managed by smaller businesses and managed by individuals who don't necessarily know a lot about security and that side of things, is much, much safer. I think that's what's come, to, come down to, isn't it, is WordPress lends itself more to you having a proactive host who might be more hands-on or working with an agency who will help manage it, update for you and do the security things for you and to keep an eye on it for you. But if you're like resolutely a one-man band, or two-man band, and you just haven't got the budget to outsource the ongoing maintenance of your website, you might have a budget to get something to design it for you. But then you think, oh, I can't afford the, a monthly ongoing thing to run it for me. Then that's where the likes of Squarespace come in, where you feel a bit safer making those changes and managing it and knowing that it's all being taken care of behind the scenes. Yeah. And I think people often say, you know, oh, but you can have a website nearly free on WordPress. Well, you really can't because, like you were saying, Charlotte, you've got all of these costs run in the background. When it's a theme, then it was just an annual cost, isn't it? And then you've got your hosting costs and all of these things. Whilst with with Squarespace, you literally got your web hosting, which you can get down for a personal plan. I think ten pounds a month for a VAT, but you know ten pounds a month. And then your hosting or uh, domain hosting, if you were to move that to Squarespace, generally is about sixteen pounds a year. So then suddenly you're looking at a much cheaper option for running a small website who didn't require any back-end coding or anything like that, but still looks on brand, feels on brand, it's for sponsored on mobile without you having to touch it. <laughs> and it's not going to break on you. you know, I think in the last uh, nearly four years now where I've been on Squarespace, not only has my clients and my own website's SEO improved, but I think I've experienced one downtime where their service had an issue and you instantly got an email through from Squarespace themselves where they gave you real life, you know, this is what's happening and it was up and running within two minutes. Whilst mm -hmm. I know people have, you know, problem where hosts will have internal attacks or anything like that, especially happens with small hosts, which, you know, we should definitely support small businesses. But I think as everyone is getting more and more, you know, digital and everything is based online, you need a web host and a domain host that is going to perform day in and day out. And I do think in many ways it's safer to keep it with a big host like say Squarespace in this case, um, where you know that their only job, their only focus is to make sure that your site and the 2.5 million other sites that they are hosting are performing 24 seven, 365 days a year. Because there's yeah, no- Yeah, always so good. Yeah, it, it's so good and they're there 24 seven. You can message them about anything and they'll respond to you in a, you know, instant. And they're really, they're willing to help as opposed to, you know, having to raise a ticker <laughs> wait <laughs> whenever they might have time to help you. So, yeah, I, I'm really pleased with the support side of them. Like I said, only once have I ever experienced any issues as such. And that issue lasted about two and a half minutes. So, <laughs> yeah. You mentioned... You mentioned SEO, and I know that's something that, you know, people consider that a bit of a buzzword. A lot of people don't necessarily know exactly what SEO is. They just go, someone has told me that that is important. I need yeah. SEO. <laughs> I need <laughs> SEO. Yeah, sometimes we get these calls. Hi, um, I need SEO. And it's like, um, okay, we're going to have to reel this one back a little <laughs> But in terms of search engine optimization with Squarespace, um, what uh, you mentioned it's it's been better you're in your experience it's been better um from an organic perspective so tell us more 
I think the biggest, um, so I know that Carl and I want us to talk about the Yoast plugin and things like that, <laughs> or, um, for the blog side of things. And yes, I will say it, I do think for someone who lives off their blog and things like that, WordPress still is superior in many ways when it comes to blogging because you can save um, the history of your posts as opposed to creating a post that is live and then going in and alter the live post and duplicating it, updating that one and then sending that one live, backdating it, so on and so forth. But um, yeah, from a pure SEO perspective, you can manage every single aspect of your, you know, your metadata on Squarespace much easier. And it's a little bit like opening one of those, <laughs> uh, whatever for dummies, like those books, where it's so easy to understand. Anyone can look at it and go, hold on, this, this makes perfect sense. You can add in your specific SEO titles that will differ from your actual page titles, which is good for search engines, because actually you can include some keywords. And the same with your meta descriptions for every single page. So you can manage that for every individual page throughout your entire website, which you don't have that same flexibility on WordPress. And I think that's why I have found it performing better. Now, yes, that said, I work in a very, same as you, in a very niche part of the industry where I think because we're pushing technology and, you know, embracing it like, more so than many others, we are able to leverage the use of SEO greater in our space than perhaps we would in a more mainstream marketing or whether that is, you know, e-commerce, clothing, pharmaceuticals, like that kind of space. But within the agricultural and equestrian sphere, there's still, you know, SEO is, I guess, in many ways, low-hanging low fruits. Mm -hmm. So you do it well and you can control it and you can update it regularly you know take into account what keywords are being used to end up on your website which guess what squarespace tells you because you've got integrated analytics you can tweak that on a weekly monthly quarterly basis as and where you know as and when you feel like you need to up something and i think that's why it's performed well because you can keep your finger on the pulse as opposed mm. to sort of a little bit <laughs> out in the dark yeah yeah and i think one of one of the things i was really pleasantly surprised with was how well squarespace plays with thing with with other systems in terms of sort of for example we use uh flowdesk um, and yeah. you know for me to add uh our flowdesk module to uh the website easy yeah it's cozy um, and and it was visually worked well. I mean, that's why we chose Flowdesk because Flowdesk and Squarespace visually work really well together. Yeah. Um, but from that perspective, I, I sort of found everything quite Squarespace. I think they've really thought about user experience when it comes to the build. And I mean, I don't know how much we've obviously not been on using Squarespace anywhere near as long as you bet how's the platform developed over the last few years so they uh last so end of 2019 just sort of december time uh, they fully pushed out their new uh, sort of 7.1 which is their latest edition of their templates if you like so it's very well the only difference really is that the way that you would update and maintain your site has been tweaked and improved in many ways but also there's a few of the older features that now aren't included which a lot of us are upset about but, I've, seen, I've seen some of the youtube videos i've been looking on how to do certain things and i've seen the controversial yeah. i could do this in 7.0 and i can't in 7.1 yeah. very upset <laughs> yeah very upset i think the good thing is that, like with any update, so you see whether it's on any any technical uh, appliance, you're you're safer going with the latest because that's only it's only going to move further and further away from the old generation, if you like. Mm -hmm. So, seven point oh is still fully supported. It's still fully functional. I don't think they would ever take that away. But I've made as soon as they launched seven point one, I consciously you know moved my own website onto that and everything i build now is on 7.1 because i do think it's about future proofing and mm. makes it makes perfect sense and that was i think a big 
a big move for Squarespace. Obviously, I can't speak on behalf of them, but I, I think they've done a good job and quite regular. You might even have seen over the last couple of months, there's a few bits in the background that have changed with regards to how you can edit your site or maintain, you know, colorways and things like that. So they're quite quick on making changes and listening to their users, which I feel, again, is so vitally important because they are, you know, they're there with their ear to the ground and they sometimes, so because I design several, you know, sites on, on their service and one of their circle members, which mm -hmm. essentially gives you insight to different aspects of the forums and uh, other ways of communicating with other designers. And what is evident is that they will very often put out questions and questionnaires to people within, you know, circle and ask, what do you think about this versus that? Or how would you deal with this? And I think they're willing to listen to their audience rather than you know, the bigger guys, because if they were to change something they've already put into place, it would take them a long time to make all the cogs turn without causing cock off, pardon my French, uh, for someone, someone of their, some of their clients. So I think they, I think they were really clever about their move. Still, there's a few things. Yes, I would like to see from 7.0 implemented on 7.1. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with the, with the way it's been moving. It sounds like they've just got the more progressive approach nailed. And I think we find that with a lot of newer businesses or the smaller players in a lot yeah. of industries, they try harder, listen to the client base because they are fighting an uphill battle. But yeah. then that's great for the users because you know you're probably going to get listened to and things will happen because they're making moves, they're shaking up the industry and good on them for doing that. One yeah. thing that really uh, pleased me, and it's something that we talk about a lot in terms of, uh, we we talk about making sure when you're establishing your brand, you have your, yes, your logo designs, that's very important, but you have broader brand guidelines beyond that. And I think one of the really pleasing things with Squarespace is um, for, for people who have sort of, they're, they're, they're not in that, sort of branding headspace that they don't work like that you can show them how to input their brand guidelines from a color perspective and then Squarespace does the hard work for them <laughs> in terms of you know showing them their colorway in like lightest is it lightest medium and then darkest option? light bright dark yeah light, bright, dark, that's it and, and I love that because I think one thing that we see businesses go wrong on over and over again is they get distracted by all the different things you know this is I think a, a limitation with Canva as well for example like there's too many options and people get overexcited and suddenly all these random colors start coming in from and you're like where did that come from whereas <laughs> Squarespace does get you to sort of channel into that you know these are my brand colours and this is where I can play with it in terms of the way it looks with, without straying from what my designer has handed to me. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that 100%. And I think you're right, though, in saying, you know, with regards to um, a brand is more than just a logo. And it's very, I think, in today's day and age as well, where people go on social media and quite quickly suffer with comparisonitis, mm -hmm. especially around the small business, They'll go, oh, but there, you know, social media looks like X, Y, Z, and I, mo I must make mine look like that as well. And then suddenly, using tools like Canva, etc., cetera, um, have taken them down this, like, rabbit hole of totally off-brand content. It might look fantastic, but it's totally confusing their audience. Mm. <laughs> and um, I bang on about a lot. <laughs> yeah. Using fonts and colours correctly. Um but yeah, I think the, the fact that Squarespace makes it easy to stay within the in your lane is yeah. such a good feature because you invest all this money in your brand design, your brand identity, use it properly. Yeah. And I think one thing with the platform as well, which as a photographer, you might go, don't say that people pay for photography, but people don't. Like, I'm a prime example. I don't like to put my face on camera, so I don't want to have, you know, a brand shoot. Charlotte, we should put something in. <laughs> I was going to say, we need to change that. <laughs> yeah. 
for me, you know, my business is my face, is all the clients that I work with. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't have personality and there's no people there. But um, I can totally understand why some businesses uh, decide to not, you know, use quality images on their site. Now, I think with Squarespace, more perhaps than any other platform, it's vital that you use good imagery because the platform is so geared towards really, really optimizing the images that you're using on your site, which is ideal because guess what? Everyone that we're talking to will be pleased, you know, visually will draw them in and capture their attention as opposed to just a lot of word uh, on a white background. But what it does is that it's tied in with Unsplash. So you can go in, add image either from your computer, whatever drive you've got, or you can go straight in and have access to, you know, all these free images that you've available for your site. Now, yes, make sure that they look on brand and make sure that you tweak them and all that. But for a business just starting out, especially service-based businesses, it's a good opportunity to get started and get the ball rolling slowly as opposed to having to work in one window, finding your images, then downloading them onto the computer, which does take up a lot of space, and then uploading them to your website. You can work within one space. And also, if you want to pay for them, you can go straight into Getty Images as well, which you know starts from £10. So it's a nice way to get going, and then you can book you know, Charlotte to come and take your photos a couple of months later. <laughs> well, we, we always say, you know, if it means you can get going, then stock imagery is fine, like, and get placeholder imagery in. We we yeah. put a site for a client and it was during tight COVID restrictions. So I had all stock imagery on his site. And then a few weeks later, we then had a photo shoot and then we updated the imagery. So mm. like you say, they, there's no harm in just getting going with quality stock imagery, as long as it's relevant to your brand. Yeah. And then you've got placeholders there. And the beauty of Squarespace art, which I love, and so many <laughs> photographers I know use Squarespace, is as you say, it's so geared to showcasing imagery. Mm. You can make it really image centric, which for people like me is absolutely great because that's what we want to show off. Mm. Exactly. I think, um, yeah, it's brilliant for that. And I do, I didn't really think that photographers actually were using it a lot until I sort of looked at it. And it makes perfect sense. It really does. Mm. It's, it's a little, it gives that magazine feel instead yeah. of sort of. <laughs> this may be a bit more clunky way of looking through someone's portfolio. And I think that's important when we are, you know, constantly surrounded by these beautiful impressions, whether it's on ads, in magazines, on social media, everything is curated. And I think that is really what the platform allows you to do. It allows you to curate content that captures your visitor's attention. Yeah. yeah. And I think with imagery in particular, um, the frustration with WordPress, is getting you know you're constantly faffing with padding and trying to get something you're like why won't you <laughs> be the same size as that one that has exactly the same dimensions as you but for some reason you're not the same yeah. we had that with um our, our headshots our headshots we were like they're the same dimension headshots yet yeah, mine is here and charlotte's is here Wow. Yeah, um, when has that odd thing? I think where also you have, you know, banner images and things like that. Um, in WordPress, it really stretches it and pulls it in an awkward way, so they always ends up looking a little bit pixelated, which is really like it quite grates me because it doesn't look great for you know your brand essentially. Um, and it doesn't you know the image can be the highest quality, but still it just doesn't look fine tuned. Mm. I think actually it's interesting, just reflecting back on something you said earlier, it's like, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, Squarespace has only got 125 templates or whatever, but, you know, they'll all look the same. I think I think Squarespace websites look more individual than WordPress. My impression of WordPress websites are often very scrolly. I think they're long websites and they're sort of block, block, block. Whereas you with word with with Squarespace you get more of a flow, I think. It doesn't look quite so sort of chunky. Um, and I think I'm pretty good at when like you know when you, you hit a website and you go, Oh, let's see what this is built on. My favorite game. Yeah, you can guess a WordPress website, I think. 
Mm. And Squarespace, well, now you go, well, it's really beautiful, so it must be Squarespace. But mm. like, you wouldn't necessarily go, oh, Squarespace, because they are so bespoke to the person that's built, you know, that's built it in their business. Yeah, no, I agree with you, and I think. There's certain things like for me, Telltale Signs is definitely a square space and I'll see it straight off the bat. But I think that's because you used to see in the back end of it. Mm. Uh, also, perhaps then, you know, people who just build the one on site. But for WordPress, I feel like the menus or the navigation is always very set in the You're way quite restricted. Yes. And I think, yes, you definitely are with square space to the extent that you can't even have, you know, a big uh, drop down sort of across the screen, but actually, I've got code, so I'll sort that out. You, it's not mm -hmm. a problem. So you can fix that. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's no, there's no restrictions in that, in that sense. You can, you can work with what you've got to a greater flexibility. And I know that there's such a vast amount of WordPress sites out there, and um, that are, you know, they look. They look bespoke and they are one of a kind, if you like. Most of the big brands will indeed be built on Squarespace, or Squarespace, sorry, WordPress. But what I do think is difficult from even a big business perspective is that even the small minute updates uh, takes an age to implement. You know, I, I think something as simple as an Instagram landing page, why pay for Linktree when you can build that? within your own website, you can change out the buttons on a regular basis, take people to your latest blog post or to your latest offerings or to your service page or anything like that. But to do the same in, in WordPress is near, you know, impossible. <laughs> and it would take a long time, especially if it's a big site where, again, those heavy to turn calls will have to, you have to consider, oh, if I change this, it's gonna break that, so on, so forth. So I think, yeah, the design flexibility and the individuality that you get from Squarespace is much greater. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Yeah. And just to wrap up, so I know we've, we've gone over time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is quite important for any web builder, I think, and I think it's worth saying, is what, when clients come to you, mm -hmm. or whoever it is they've got designing their website, what is really important for them to have in place and think about before you can start building? There, Brandon. <laughs> so images and colorways. Now we can help develop that, not a problem. But obviously that is not included within a website build. So yeah, your images and your branding, uh, your fonts and your text. Now just writing something out in notepad on your phone and then expecting it to perform, it doesn't cut it. You know, you've got amateur sitting at home blogging whose blog posts are totally unrelated to, to what you're searching for or to what your business is, they'll appear higher in searches that you're, this is what I do, chatty, chatty, chat. You have to write with SEO in mind. And again, if that's something you can't do, that's something you need help with. So I think web design, if, if you go to a designer that only charges you a few hundred pounds and you can give them next to nothing and then expect the Fabergé egg, they're just taking your money and just go there, pay a little bit extra and make sure that your branding is on point and that your text is on point because that's half the job. You know, that's I would say more than half the job. Building the site when you know you came to me with these things, I could build you a big site in two weeks, it's not a problem. But if you don't have that, I'm not going to keep you that build date because that's impossible. <laughs> so you can't go live without that, and also consider where you want your domain to be hosted, whether you want that to be hosted with, you know, someone like Squarespace, or if you want to keep it with your existing host. And so that, you know, when I go, can I have the passwords to either move your domain or redirect it? And you go, what? Oh, that's Sorry. classic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Make sure, you have your, make sure you own your domain. Yeah, exactly. And I think actually that's been quite a big problem in the equestrian and probably also rural space is that, People have worked with agencies that don't understand the industry sector. And then when they come to maybe wanting to move their site, they don't actually own their domain and mm -hmm. they're going to have to pay thousands to get it back. And I think that's really sad when you're you're working with small businesses. And mm -hmm. yeah, so for, for me, that's that's one of my biggest bugbears, I think, actually. 
Yeah. So if people want to chat to you on a one-to-one -one basis, perhaps about a Squarespace website, um, where can we find you online? You can find us online at queryco.com or you can find us socials. Uh, Instagram is where we're most active uh, after our now six-week hiatus. Uh, Aquary Consulting. And yeah, that's where we are across all platforms. So that's, yeah, drop us a message or we can book you in for a discovery call. I'd like to keep them to 20 minutes. They tend to take about two hours because I like them. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for thank you. coming and chatting about Squarespace. I feel like we've been quite, we did say we're going to keep this super balanced and like, you know, Squarespace, WordPress, keep it balanced. But I feel like we've been, <laughs> but, but it, it's, it is horses for courses and if WordPress works for you then it works for you but I think exploring the options that are out there is definitely worth doing if you are at a point of um, being a little bit fed up perhaps with trying to manage your WordPress website or feeling like you don't manage it enough because you just don't want to touch it. I mm. think that's where we were at. Uh, we just didn't want to upset anything so we we didn't get involved with it too much so or i didn't anyway <laughs> charlotte, charlotte would have to go in and correct anything that i had broken um so yes i think it's like we say on everything it's about trying different things out and working out what it is that really works for you and what you're going to proactively use rather than just sit and look at and go I don't want to touch it. Yeah. Um, so, Charlotte, next week. Oh no, we're at Windsor next week. Oh, there is we might, next week. We might have to have a week off. I think we are probably going to treat ourselves to a week off next week because I think we've done about twenty a weeks lot. straight at this point. <laughs> wow. um, so yes, we are at Windsor Horse Show next week, next Thursday. So if anybody else happens to be at Windsor next Thursday. Um, let us know because we will be perched somewhere with a bottle of something pretty. Um, and we will see you the following week with a new set of topics. We're, we're refreshing on the topics. So um, if anybody's got anything they particularly want us to cover, um, then pop, uh, we actually, I did a post about it. So pop your answers in the post and we will make sure that we cover those in the upcoming schedule. Right, thanks guys, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.